going on guys it's a boy Joe blue gaming welcome to another tutorial video in today's video i'm going to be teaching you guys on how to create a craft bucket server for minecraft 17 and how to port for it in one video so if you guys enjoyed the video obviously make sure you give it a like it really helps out a lot guys you guys are absolutely amazing so make sure you give this video a like and subscribe for some more let's do this all right guys so let's go ahead and hop right into this guys let's do this so the first thing we're gonna have to do is download the minecraft craft bucket version we want to create our server the, now the one i'm gonna be doing is the version 1.17 just because a lot of the new plugins have been just coming out from Minecraft Open 17. So I'm just going to go with this version. And yeah, so go in the first thing in the description. Select the Minecraft version you want. You can go all the way up, down, whatever version. Once you have the version you want, you're going to simply click on download. And then you're going to download here. You're going to click it and it'll download the craft bucket file. All right. Also, what you need to do is create yourself a Minecraft server folder. All right. Now, the second thing we're going to do is download Java SC Development Kit 16. Okay. The reason why we need this is for Minecraft versions 1.17 and up, you need to download this Java to be able to run the servers, okay? So if you have a Windows right here, you're going to download this one right here. You're going to click on this. It'll download, install it, and you should be all good to go. It takes a few seconds. And then if you have a Mac, go ahead and download this one right here. Click install, and you should be good to go. The last thing we have to do now is highlight this Java right here, this command line, and copy it, okay? That's all we have to do. All right, so I had downloaded the craft bucket 1.17. I'm going to go ahead and drag it into the Minecraft server folder. Now, the difference between craft bucket and normal vanilla server right here is that craft bucket allows you to install plugins to your server, which then can create a more professional server like set spawns, uh, slash home. These are all things you can't do with a normal Minecraft server. Okay, so we went ahead and just dragged the craft bucket file into our Minecraft server. We went ahead and copied this as well right here. Now, I do have a set spawn plugin for Minecraft 4.17 just to show you guys that this does work, okay? So we're going to open up the Minecraft server folder. What we're going to do first is rename this file, okay? And what I do is I always name it to server, and that's it. It's so much easier if you just do that, okay? Second, what we need to do now is right-click, okay? Go to new text document, all right? Now, once your text document is then created, what you can do is double click the new text document once you have once you've opened up this new text document you're going to click Control v okay so now we have this file this command that we just copied and we now paste it in a text document first thing you do is under this you're going to type pause okay so if you have any issues when you run the server it'll automatically pause it so you can see what the issue is second we're going to get rid of this 1024 we're going to put 2048 for two gigabytes it's just better to start up the server with two gigabytes of course, I would recommend you add more RAM, especially depending if there's over 20 people that join the server. I would definitely recommend you at least devote four to five gigabytes, if maybe minimum three. So we just put two just for an example to get the server good and running. Now, what we're going to do next is get rid of this Minecraft underscore and the 1.17.1. We have to keep the dot jar. If, if it just shows like this... It will not open the server command, okay? This server.jar file. So what you have to do is type in .jar. You have to make sure that the .jar stays there. No matter if this is different, this always has to be here, okay? So you can see server, server. And that's why I rename it to server. It's a lot easier to just keep this as server.jar. It's a lot easier. So now what we're going to do is file, save as, text. Uh, click on text document, go to all files, and then type in run dot that okay now click save okay now the reason why we create this file is to be able to run the server because we don't want to just double click on this okay it is not the proper way of actually running the server it's a it, it works but i would definitely recommend you just go with the run.bat okay so you're going to double click the run.bat it's going to then open up the server and in this video i'm teaching you on how to create the server and port for the server and i'm doing this as quick as possible for you guys okay and as simplified so click any key to continue we then need to click on this ula and rename this to true okay and then click file save again make sure you downloaded java 16 okay if not you will get an error all right and then click run again so we just changed that from false to true in the ula right here we we changed it from false to true and now we just re-ran the server. And now what's going to happen is the server is going to go ahead and create all of these folders right here that you guys will see in just a second. As you can see, boom, there you go. It's creating all of the, the folders we want, the server properties, everything we need to run the server. All right. So we're just going to let this load up. And then after that, we can go ahead and install the plugin and then we should be able to port forward the server. 
So the server's done. We're going to type stop, enter. Then it's going to say press any key to continue. Like that. And now we went ahead and created the server. So now we want to go ahead and drag our plugin in, in our server. Okay, so anytime you want to install a plugins, you're going to double click on this plugins folder and then you're going to drag this plugin in this. Okay, so next time you run the server, it'll actually run the plugin and then you'll have the plugin installed. Make sure that the plugin is the correct version for Minecraft 4.17 or whatever server you're running at the version. Okay, so next what we have to do is double click. Now we're going to do the port forwarding. Okay, so double click on the server properties. You can see right here we have the query port, all right? So what we're going to do is copy this. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is go to your Windows firewall, okay? You're going to go to advanced settings. Under advanced settings, all right, in your Windows firewall, I like to click Window Defender Firewall Properties. Under domain, under private profile, okay? Private profile, you're going to click allow outbound connections and inbound connections allow. Now, I can keep mine a block and it still works, okay? So, if it doesn't work and your friend still can't join your public IP, come here and click allow, okay? And it should allow anybody to join your network. In public profile, I have it under both allow, okay? So, as long as you allow this meaning it'll allow inbound connections okay if for me it still works even with the uh blocked but i'm just going to allow it for this example and then you're going to click apply it's going to give you a warning and now basically your window firewall is off so now basically anybody can join uh your ip once they give you once you give it to them now now what i would also recommend you do is under inbound rules right here you go to new rule you're going to go to port next and then you're going to enter the Minecraft port that we copied. You're going to do TCP next. Allow the connection next. Make sure these are all checked next. You're going to name it MC server and then finish. Once that's finished, you're going to see it come up. And then you're going to click new rule. Port again. Next. Enter that port and then click UDP. Okay. Next. Allow this connection. Next. Make sure these are all checked. And then you're going to name it MC server again. You can name them the same name and then click finish. And then basically you're allowing the port. Okay. And then you're going to go to outbound rules, new rules. You're going to do the exact same thing. Port next. Enter your port. Next. Allow this connection. Next. Next. Name it MC server. Done. Now, again, port. Enter your port. And this time you're going to go to UDP. UDP. So you have to do it for both. Okay. So once that's done, we can go ahead and close this out. Now, what we need to do is open up our command prompt. So what I like to do is type in command prompt. It's going to show up right here. Open that up. And then you're going to type in IP config. Okay. So now you're going to get your IPv4 and your default gateway. Okay. What you're going to do is you copy your default gateway. So highlight it, control C, open up your browser. And then control V in your pow in your your actual browser. Now, usually it's gonna ask you for username and password. If you look at your wireless router that you have in your house, if you look under it, sh under the wireless router, it should say username and password. I'm also gonna leave a website down in the description for you guys that basically tells you on how to get this username and password. If you can't seem to find it, I would recommend you call your provider and they should be able to provide you with it. Okay. So the next thing what we're going to do now, since we're in our actual list router, this is our wireless router, a smart RG. Now, this is going to be completely different for everybody. Okay, completely different. This is going to be completely different for everybody. So what I would recommend, I'm going to do my best to try to make it as similar for everybody. Once you're here, you have to find a section where it says port forwarding. Okay, so I don't see it anywhere here. If I go to basics, um, I don't see it anywhere here. If I go to advanced... Uh, there we go forwarding. So now I see forwarding. So I'm going to click on that if you now some like I said Everybody's different the router you might log in and you might automatically see port forwarding I have to look for mine. Okay, so once I found mine, mine what I'm going to do is create IPv4 address What we're going to do is we're going to re-grab the actual server port right here I would recommend that you always just keep it to the default port of 25565 What we're going to do is type in the local port local start port local end port you might have two fill them both in okay same thing with external now again you might not have this external local yours just might be one line just make sure that your end port if you say anything with port you're entering them both okay 
So under protocol, select both. Okay, if you don't have both, make sure you do TCP. You enter all this like we will. You click apply and then you're going to recreate a new one and then you're going to do it for UDP. So you have to do it twice if you don't have this both section. Since I have both, I don't need to do it two times, okay? So now what we need to do is grab our local IP, which is our IPv4 address, okay? So we're going to copy this and then we're going to paste it into our in local and external IP. Under description, I'm just going to put Minecraft and then we're going to click enable on, all right? So that's pretty much it. Once you have this done, you're pretty much good to go. You can click apply, all right? And now your server should be port forwarded, okay? So what we're going to go ahead and do is copy the IPv4 address one more time. And what we're going to do is put it in the server IP right here, okay? Under server IP, you're going to put that. And then click file, save. Now you can close out of all this. You can go ahead and run the server, okay? So I'll run the server and I'll go ahead and see you guys in the game. All right, guys. So we are now in the multiplayer. What you have to go ahead and do is click add server and then type in your IPv4 address, okay? So the reason for that is because you're only able to join your local IPv4 address, all right? Your friends, you're going to have to send them your public IP. So if you type in Google, what's my IP, it should give you your public IP. And then you would send that to your friends, okay? And again, if it doesn't work, it might be because of your fire your firewall okay or antivirus or antivirus softwares that might be blocking them from joining so make sure you disable that like i showed you guys at the beginning okay so now you can see that you're going to be able to join your local ipv4 address now your friends like i said will need to join your public ip you sometimes might be able to join your public ip but most of the time you won't be able to okay so just do your ipv4 address and you'll be able to join your server so as you can see now, we are currently in the actual Minecraft server. Now, let me go ahead and show you guys that the plugin actually does work, okay? So we went ahead and created a craft bucket server. The whole point of the video was to show you guys that we can create a craft bucket server and port for it at the same time, okay? So let's go ahead and see if it works. So let's, oh yeah, it already works. So set spawn, boom, there we go. We officially have a set spawn plugin in place. So now anytime we do slash spawn, it'll bring us directly to our spawn. And guys, that's how you go ahead and create yourself a Minecraft server. If you guys enjoyed the video, please let me know in the comments below. If there's any questions, please don't be afraid to leave them down below. I would really appreciate it. And please make sure to give the video a like, guys. I would really, really appreciate that. And thank you guys so much for all of the support. I hope you guys have a beautiful day, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.